Good morning, good afternoon and good evening to all denarians on the go and in the know. Today is December 13, 2019. Please like subscribe and share to help support our channel. Special announcement. Check out the 12 days of Christmas sale. Get up to 35% discount on all CEP products. Use the promo code FEDENARIAN and receive an additional $10 off. Get your favorite denarian, the sense of security he or she deserves for Christmas, it is worth its weight in gold. Note, every two days the discount is going to go down, get your copy today, before it is too late. Stay informed and stay alert. I would like to point out something today. Do you realize that in the past 48 hours, we have accomplished more economic world progress than we have in the past 48 months? We have the USMCA United States-Mexico-Canadian Agreement, we have Brexit sealed up with Boris Johnson re-elected and the US-China Phase 1 trade deal signed sealed and delivered. These are bigger than you know, things are moving at god speed now denarians, the main groundwork is set, be ready, be excited but stay grounded and know that today we are one day closer than yesterday. Let's get started. First article of interest. US. China Trade Pact aims at currency manipulation. Washington, as part of a prospective deal on trade, the US and China have agreed to measures that American officials say will deter Beijing from currency manipulation by requiring greater disclosure of economic actions, according to current and former officials familiar with the deal. The deal also includes penalties for China if it manipulates its currency to increase exports which is in violation of international guidelines, these people say. The fundamental issue on currency across the board is we want to make sure people meet their obligations, that they don't devalue their currency for competitive purposes, Treasury Secretary Stephen Mnuchin said in an interview. That's the objective. An enforceable currency measure will be significant and would represent a further step forward into bringing discipline to the currency manipulation issue said Fred Bergson, a former top Treasury Department official and co-founder of the Peterson Institute for International Economics. Next article of interest, al Habausi, the President of the Republic cannot submit a candidate to head the government without the agreement of the Shi'i blocs. Today, Friday, the leader of the Iraqi Forces Alliance and Representative Hebet al Habausi confirmed the inability of the President of the Republic, Baram Saleh, to present a candidate to head the government without agreement and the Shiite blocs agree to ensure his passage in parliament. al Halbausi said, in a statement reported by an Arab newspaper and seen by al Akbaria, that Saleh cannot submit any candidate for prime minister without agreement and agreement between the Shiite blocs in order to ensure his passage within the parliament, noting that all the Shiite forces did not agree until the moment, definitively, on the person of the next prime minister, although al Sudani is the most prominent candidate for the prime minister. He added, the Iraqi street, and even the religious authority, do not accept that the new prime minister be from within the political bloc or subordinate to them, but rather they are with an independent candidate, stressing that the authority wants to choose an independent political figure for the prime minister and any personality affiliated with any party politics will be rejected by the reference in Rising Street. Next article of interest, the legality of Parliament is about to end amending some articles of the election law, and wisdom is more likely to be passed next Monday. The legal committee is working within the House of Representatives to amend some of the wording in the articles of the new election law, which was agreed upon between the political blocs, to change them. The law is likely to pass in the House of Representatives session scheduled for next Monday. On Friday, December 13, 2019, MP from the al Hikmat movement, Hassan Khaladi, said, Parliament will hold its session next Monday in the event that the Parliamentary Legal Committee has completed the amendments. The previous electoral method, except for changing the electoral divider, the member of the legal committee, Amjad al Yukabi, said in a press statement, published by the Obelisk, on Thursday, that the political blocs agreed on most of the provisions of the election law, adding that there is one article being persuaded by the Kurds. 
al yukabi said, the Kurds refused to adopt multiple districts because of the large number of districts in Nineveh province. It is noteworthy that the presidency of parliament had postponed, on Wednesday, December 11, 2019, the convening of its session, until the parliament elections elections law was completed and agreed upon. Next article of interest. Oil rises to three-month high. Oil prices continued their gains on Friday, recording its highest level in three months as the United States and China approached a solution to the 18-month-old trade dispute between the two largest economies in the world, which raised great questions about global demand for crude. By 0730 GMT, Brent futures were up 47 cents, or 0.7%. To $64.67 a barrel, the highest level since September 23. WTI rose 34 cents, or 0.6%, to $59.52 a barrel, the strongest price since September 16. The appetite for risk has opened up ambitiously after Trump hinted that he has entered into an agreement with China which would be entirely positive for the outlook for global demand for crude said Edward Moya, chief market analyst in Awanda. Margaret Young, market analyst at CMC Markets, said a drop in the U.S. dollar on the back of a strong rise in the pound also helped boost commodity prices. Next article of interest. The spokesman acknowledges the problem of keeping the budget project with the government. Dr. Saad al-Hadithi, a spokesman for the Prime Minister's Information Office, acknowledged that there is a problem that must be resolved in keeping the state's draft general budget for 2020, calling for finding a legal way out to send it to parliament. Al-Hadithi told Al-Sabah, the government was keen to complete the budget project and deliver it urgently to parliament, noting that the delay in it occurred when adding the financial allocations necessary to implement the decisions issued by the cabinet in response to the demands of the demonstrators. He added that the Council of Ministers had issued decisions in this regard that required financial allocation, and the delay process occurred as a result of adding these financial allocations completely to implement all these decisions. It is solved. Does the current government send the draft budget without a legal obstacle? While if it is left to the next government, whose formation may be delayed, it could affect government spending paths during the coming period. Al-Hadithi added that the tasks of the current caretaker government are continuous and continuous, which they perform according to what is required by the duty defined by the Constitution, with the exception of two powers that can no longer be exercised, which is the power to enact bills, conclude external agreements and treaties, while its powers are related to other issues as a government to discharge daily tasks. It is continuous and takes place regularly and it is part of the constitutional obligations that it cannot abandon, because as a result there are issues related to the functioning of the administrative, financial, economic, and service aspects of the citizen. A spokesman for the media office of the Prime Minister indicated that the current government continues its work until a new government is formed, which, when it grants confidence and votes to its members and its program, becomes constitutional with absolute powers and carries out its actions on this basis. Next article of interest. China is experiencing the largest debt default in 20 years. China has seen a major commodity trader defaulted on dollar-denominated bonds, making it the largest failure of debt repayment by a government company in more than two decades. Today, Thursday, the state-owned Chinese company, Theo Group, announced the results of an unprecedented debt restructuring plan, which included most investors accepting heavy losses, quoting Bloomberg. The company, located in the northern city of Tianjin, said that dollar bond investors, who accounted for 57% of total debt owed at $1.25 billion, had agreed to get between 37 and 67 cents per dollar based on the maturity of the debt. About 22.6% of those bondholders voted to exchange their debts for new bonds with sharply lower coupons, the overseas debt manager told Teo Group. According to Evan Cheng, an analyst at Moody's Investors Service, a resident of Hong Kong, this is a form of default on the basis of agency definitions.
the debt restructuring plan, the first of its kind for Chinese state-owned companies in the dollar-denominated bond market, comes before a $300 million debt maturity date on December 16. The failure of Tao Group to pay off its debts within the dollar-denominated bond market is the largest for a Chinese state-owned company since the collapse of Guangdong International Trust and Investment in 1998. This falter comes amid the trend of China to record a new record year of defaults on domestic bonds, against the backdrop of a sharp slowdown in the country's economic growth, which would be the lowest in three decades. Teo clarified that the settlement of the debt restructuring offers is expected to take place by December 17. Next article of interest. Arab criticism examines the work of modern financial technologies. The Director General of the Board of Directors of the Arab Monetary Fund, Dr. Abdul Rahman bin Abdullah Al Hamidi, will open tomorrow, Sunday. The third meeting of the Working Group on Modern Financial Technologies in Abu Dhabi Emirati. This comes with the aim of enhancing opportunities for the exchange of knowledge, experiences and expertise in the field of building strategies for the applications of modern financial technologies, and for enhancing the safety and efficiency of electronic operations for financial infrastructure systems Arabic. Priority Papers, in its third meeting, one year after its launch, the group discusses priority issues and papers in the field of modern financial technologies prepared by the group, the most important of which is adopting guidelines on digital identity and the rules for knowing your electronic customer, adopting guidelines for electronic security in the Arab countries, and setting guidelines on building strategies to enhance modern financial technologies. The group also addresses other topics such as, the developments of digital currencies issued by central banks, the latest developments in the design of digital payments, and assets encoded in its various forms. The group will also discuss the experiences of a number of startups that have provided successful solutions in the field of modern financial technologies, some of which have been partnered with commercial banks. Financial Technology Applications Al Hamidi praised the great importance of this group as a platform for dialogue and providing technical advice and recommendations on the issues of promoting applications of modern financial technologies and overcoming related challenges in Arab countries, with the aim of maximizing the benefit from the opportunities it provides on the one hand, and at the same time, working to reduce negative repercussions on safety and integrity of financial and banking work on the one hand other. He affirmed his pride in the cooperation of regional and international institutions in existing partnerships with these institutions, research centers, universities and service providers, in a manner that enhances opportunities for transfer of knowledge, exchange of experiences and experiences, and crystallization of different visions to activate and organize the financial technology industry and develop policies that stimulate its growth in the region. Arabic. It is worth mentioning that the meeting will be held in the presence of representatives from the central banks and Arab monetary institutions, ministries of finance, money market authorities, commercial banks, financial services companies, the Federation of Arab Stock Exchanges, and a number of banking unions in the Arab countries, in addition to representatives of modern financial technology services providers from the region Arab and outside it, consultants, and experts from various regional and international financial institutions and frameworks, as well as a number of leading private sector institutions in various fields of modern financial technologies. Next article of interest. U.S. State Department. We call on Iran to stop assisting third parties in Iraq. The U.S. Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo has pledged that the United States will respond decisively to any attack by Iran or its followers that could harm the American forces or their partners in Iraq. We strongly condemn the attack by Iran's followers, which wounded five Iraqi soldiers near Baghdad airport this week, Pompeo said in a tweet posted Friday evening on his official account on Twitter. Pompeo threatened, saying, for Iranian leaders, the United States will respond resolutely if Iran or its followers inflict any harm on American cadres or our Iraqi partners. Next article of interest. Trump comments on Johnson's victory in the British elections. 
U.S. President Donald Trump, on Friday, commented on the results of the British parliamentary elections won by the Conservative Party led by Prime Minister Boris Johnson. Trump tweeted on his Twitter account, saying, It seems that Boris Johnson has won a big victory in the United Kingdom. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson had said earlier today, after winning his seat in Uxbridge, that the election results would give the Conservative Party a new and strong mandate to complete Britain's exit from the European Union. At this point, it appears that this is a Conservative government, Johnson said. It received a new and strong mandate not only to accomplish Brexit, but to unify and advance the country. A poll of voters in the early legislative elections in Britain on Thursday showed that the Conservative Party led by Prime Minister Boris Johnson will win an absolute majority in the next House of Commons, which will allow Johnson to fulfill his promise to remove Britain from the European Union in late January. According to the poll, which was conducted by the Ipsos Murray Institute for British Media, the Conservative Party would win 368 out of 650 seats in the House of Commons, compared to 191 seats for the Labour Party. As soon as the news of Johnson's victory became popular, the price of the British pound jumped more than 2% against the dollar and approached 2% against the euro. Like subscribe to be alerted as more articles of interest unfold. Make sure you take advantage of the 12 days of Christmas sale. Get up to 35% discount on all CEP products. Use the promo code FEDENARIAN and receive an additional $10 off the full unleashed version. Get your copy today, before it is too late. The link is in the description below. Stay informed and stay alert. Knowledge is power. And know that today we are one day closer than yesterday, over and out for now, the Denarian.